is at a fall risk, but, but the point of this is actually that this is the caregiver question of the week this week. Uh, I am sitting in my car actually waiting to pick up my son who may arrive at any moment. So hopefully we're not interrupted here. Um, uh, okay. So caregiver question of the week. This is a really, honestly, this is a gnarly question. Okay. It has to do with how do you get someone to take their medications when they are refusing medications and they have dementia. This is a seriously gnarly, multi-layered issue. And I'll do my best to address it here on caregiver question of the week. Um, before we get started, hello, my name's Amelia. I'm an occupational therapist. I'm also the owner and founder of Higher Standards Caregiver Training, as well as the very proud co-founder of Whole Care Network University. That is WCNUniversity.com. Um, and this is for educational purposes only, all right? So if you hear me say something here that reminds you of someone who you think needs to be assessed by a licensed healthcare provider, then please make sure that you are getting that person assessed or advocating for that assessment is this is not a substitute substitute for a therapeutic relationship and it is not a substitute for health or medical advice okay let's dig in to this pretty difficult question and topic um and also i just want to say understanding the layers of complexity for this, I'm going to be linking you to a really great article from Dr. Brittany Lamb that actually addresses this question um, very specifically as well. So if if you're watching this and um, you are having the same issue, it's an article that I definitely recommend you read after you watch the answer here on caregiver question of the week. Um, also, I'm, I'm going to be linking you to um, a couple of courses from Shea Domain. She's a physician assistant who specializes in um, medication education. And so she would also be a great resource for people who are struggling with this particular topic. I'm going to link to a couple of her courses at WCN University as well. As well. So again, um, definitely check those things out after you watch uh, the answer in the video here today on Caregiver Question of the Week. Speaking of which, let's dive right in. Okay, so first off, the, the, I think the way that we have to start answering this question is to acknowledge the fact that people do have the right to refuse medications and they have the right to refuse really truly any medical care or option that is being presented to them, um, even if we don't like it sometimes. Of course, this issue becomes a little bit muddier when we're talking about people who have dementia who may not be capable of really making informed decisions, um, right? So again, that's another reason, definitely, definitely, if this is an issue you're grappling with, please check out the offerings from Dr. Brittany Lamb. This is like her jam, guys. She can really help you out here in terms of how we make medical decisions for people with dementia. Um, but getting back to this issue of medications, again, uh, like I think that's, that's how the answer to this question has to be started. It's to say, it's just to acknowledge that people do have the right to refuse medications and they have the right, right to refuse really any medical treatment um, or option that is being offered to them. So though, how do we, how do we encourage someone to take their medications that they need if they don't want to take them? I think Ultimately, this comes down to getting into the understanding of why. Now, there might be a lot of different reasons why someone might not want to take their medications. Um, some of them you've probably thought of before already, but there might be a couple that I'm going to review here that are not necessarily familiar to, to you. So certainly one of the biggest reasons why is that when someone is confused and they don't know what that medication is for, they may not want to take it because they feel afraid of the medication. They're not quite sure what it is going to do to them. Um, perhaps they had a bad experience with medication at some point in their past. Maybe it made them feel sick. Maybe they associate it with feeling bad. And so they don't want to take that medication because they're scared of it. They're not sure what it's going to do. And they are afraid of any side effects um, or just generally suspicious of the medication. Sometimes in that situation, all you can really do is work to reassure that person that the medication that they're going to take 
is okay for them. So that means very patiently and calmly. And maybe with someone with dementia, over and over and over again, every single time, calmly looking at the bottle with them, saying what it's for, um, uh, talking about the fact that the doctor has prescribed it and why, um, and reassuring them. I understand here that that is sometimes easier to say than it is to do. But when someone is having fear about taking a medication, um, sometimes all we can do is try to be a calm, trusted person in that present moment who can provide them with information um, in order to, the information that they trust in order to make them feel more comfortable. Another really common reason why someone may not be taking medications or may not want to take medications though is also because sometimes their medications um, are hard for them to manage in their mouth or they may be hard for them to swallow. Oh, I got a kiddo coming here. I better wrap it up. Okay, I'm back. Safely parked again, uh, waiting for more kid stuff. Um, so let's pick up where we left off. Um, talking about the fact that sometimes people won't take medications because they can't manage them in their mouths or maybe they can't swallow them very well. Um, it, so that, you can see symptoms of that if someone like might put a medication in their mouth but then they pull it out. You also might see um, issues related to this if people are, are taking food out of their mouth rather than swallowing it. Swallowing it, often that can be a sign that someone might be having trouble managing the things in their mouth or swallowing the things in their mouth. If you see something like that, definitely make sure that you are bringing it up uh, with the primary care physician um, so that they can rest, uh, request an order for perhaps something like speech therapy who are gonna be super, super value. If you see someone super value, sorry guys, super valuable, if you see someone who is having problems managing the things in their mouth or potentially having a swallowing issue, um, again, that can be a reason why someone might not want to take their medications. If they're not able to physically or if they're not comfortable taking those medications. Um, other Thinking about other ways that other reasons um, that someone might not be able to actually physically access their medications, thinking about can they see it in front of them? Um, is it a white pill in a white cup? Do they see that it's there? Can they manipulate that pill and get it from, um, from the bottle or from the table into their mouth? That kind of thing. Um, so again, if you see people just having those kinds of issues, it's a really good idea to talk to the primary care doctor about it and get orders for therapy to come in and really do an in-depth evaluation and see what the problem might be. Um, if you think that there is an, act, an issue in terms of taking medication that is related to that person really not being able to physically manage that medication. What I will say also is that it is really important to make sure that you're talking to the doctor about these kinds of issues as well because sometimes if someone is having trouble physically managing, for example, if someone can't swallow their medications, there might be alternative solutions to that that your doctor can go over with you. Perhaps there's a different medication, a different method of providing that. Um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to cross over any lines here as an occupational therapist. Um, uh, you know, medication prescribing and all of that stuff is really outside of my, my scope of practice. Um, but what I will say is that uh, this is something that you need to talk with your primary care doctor about. Um, and I will, I also think it's important to say that you should never assume that it's okay to crush a medication, um, break up a medication. Some medications it is okay, and some medications it's not gonna be okay. So talk with your doctor, see what's okay and what's not okay for the medications that you have. And if the person that you're caring for is having trouble managing or swallowing their medications in their current form, you know, see what the alternative options are as well. Um, okay, so, that's it for this caregiver question of the week. Like I said, this is kind of a big gnarly issue and topic. Make sure 
that you are checking out the blog from Dr. Brittany Lamb. It is incredibly informative. Um, she links to some other additional resources from there as well. Check out the courses from Shay Domain. She's a physician assistant. I am. Uh, she deals um, pretty much exclusively in her education with medication management. Okay, so check out her courses. I'm gonna link them to you. Um, at the bottom in the comments uh, for wherever you're watching caregiver question of the week um, and if I think of any other resources to go along with this I will definitely link them there as well and if you are a healthcare professional this is something you work with and you want to chime in on this definitely let me know because it is a big topic and I want to make sure that that it's covered effectively here all right, thank you all for watching this caregiver question of the week. My timing is good this time. I see a child uh, approaching the car um, and I'm gonna wrap up here now. I will see you next time. Until then, please stay healthy, stay well, and most of all, take care. Bye.